Welcome to the Dead Ball area. In this video, we'll take a look at a short sequence of play from early in the England vs New Zealand semi-final at last year's 2019 World Cup. New Zealand is defending and we can see they've matched England's five-man line-out. Smith is here in the two position and Taylor's in the traditional half-back position patrolling the rear of the line-out. They're running a five-man midfield with Surveyor defending at 12, Moody out shot defending at 10 with Moonga hidden out as the fifth man in defence with Reese on the wing. In the line-out, Taylor has three obvious roles. First, clean up the overshoot, the long ball. Second is to defend the player coming through the line-out or peeling short around the back. And third, keep the seam closed by pushing across on the inside of the ball to fill the void. Reed will jump mainly to disrupt the England catcher, and if he can steal the ball, great. But as he goes up, we see his hips are turned to face away from his lifters who propel him through the England line-out. And it creates a slightly messy ball for Youngs, but it's great handsome for the players to take the pass. Taylor and Moody have now connected, closing off the seam, and Reed and Smith, confident in the defence, are a little less urgent, scanning what's going on and starting to think about reloadings on this near side of the field. And the defence on the far side has gone a little soft. After the initial press, and perhaps with the obvious backdoor options, it might be a good option to push a little further up and pressure them. Bunapolo and Tulangi do just enough to let Fowl slide around into the Moonga, with Daly and May free to attack Reese. And as that happens, realising he's outnumbered, Reese pushes up to shut off the long pass to May. He's also now in Fowl's vision, which makes him opt to go alone and take contact. Now, I think with pace of Daly and the space available to him, and Reese already swimming backwards, it might have been a good option to play the pass. Perhaps it would have created an opportunity to beat Reese on the outside, and maybe a two or one versus one against Barrett. Also, if Farrell stays alive and follows the pass, perhaps he can get a second touch, or maybe support the ruck. Now England pick and go twice, which keeps New Zealand moving backwards. But watch how both Surveyor and Goodhue are quick to get back into play. And that speed of their return to play allows New Zealand to keep their line integrity intact by not folding in to fill the spaces they would leave. And watch also how New Zealand are not concerned about setting on the back feet, and the focus is more on a solid and wide defensive line. Also, on this near side, we can see Smith calling Moonga out to the outside, getting lighter, quicker players in the outside defensive channels. As things slow down, Goodhue bounces out to defend in the wider areas, leaving the heavy artillery to try and soak up England's short game. And this means he's not disrupting players who are already set and the defensive pace is now wider, covering more spacious areas of the pitch. Sinclair plays out the back to forward, and with the ball going to ground, four New Zealand players biting on forward, which leaves Watson open in the wide with no one to track him. And it's great vision by Ford to swing the ball to the edge. Bridge handles this well though, he doesn't commit too early, backs off, waits for support and then makes a nice clean tackle. Now does Daly go straight off his feet here? I'd say yes, but I'd also say with no New Zealander player competing, the impact is minimal, so play on. New Zealand have set up a good 2-3 paces off the ruck to avoid any offside calls and anticipate Young's pass, so they're moving when he moves the ball later on. Now we'll see that from England a bit later on as well. Here we can see the speed of England's recycle means that all blacks are maybe not quite set how they'd like to be. They're quite now on the defence and Reese is starting to become isolated on this far side. Smith is starting to track into the middle backfield and Barrett, just in shot, looks as if he will now shoot into the far backfield. Mahunga looks to be holding the width on this near side and Bridge starts to slide back to allow Smith to push across, meaning they'll likely adopt a 13 plus 2 defensive alignment. It's a strong carry from Curry, who gets onto a tired Moody's weak shoulder and carries through the first line of defence. New Zealand again scramble, and as England recycle, we can see them manage to get a good solid inside defence, leaving the space wide. This is in contrast to England, who like to fill the pitch, as we'll see shortly. However, the block and slide play fixes the New Zealand's inside defenders, and Tui Lange pushes onto the outside, feeds onto May, and stays alive to support. Now Barrett is pushed up from the back to close his space and as the ball is recycled, Leonard Brown slots in behind the ruck, making sure he's available should Young's dart left or right. Both Taylor and Barrett's sole focus here is Young's and next out is Moody, out of shot here, who has two rolls. Assist in the inside defenders if Young darts and if not, push out onto the ball, tracking the inside of it. England carry and we can see off this ruck New Zealand have covered really well. They've set a good, solid, well-spaced line. On the far side, they have the numbers, and though they aren't quite set, they are in a position to shut down any blindside attack. The issue for England here is May gets up from the previous ruck, gets into the first receiver position, and whilst it's great work rate from May, it changes the focus of the carry pod and also stops the momentum as he's coming from a standing start. And Unfortunately, May ends up carrying isolated into three men. Metallic coming in low from the outside, Lau Lau stays ready to assist, and Barrett waits to attack the ball. The real issue for England here is as May carries, 
He takes it from an apex-led carry to an inside runner, which means the only person actually available to support him is George on his right, who now has to change his line around Vitalik and is unable to get an effective clean in on Barrett. And Barrett is immediately on the ball, and England now have to transition from attack to defence. First up, we can see Billy Vinopola indicating they have down numbers on the right. And as the ball comes out, New Zealand have the numbers, and Curry does exactly the right thing and backs off enough so he can get reconnected with Watson. That then hopefully buys time for Vunapola, Laws and Underhill to get across and support them. And on the far side, we can see May starting to push back as daily out shot starts to push up to support Watson. And this moves on to the next breakdown, as we'll see this cluster of players, instead of following a lost cause, come back in unison to create defensive width. It's a phenomenal piece of work by Laws to cut Goodhue down, and this allows Daly to pressure Moonga, who gets a rather sketchy pass away to Bridge. The poor pass is enough to halt Bridge, and as he's dragged down again by Laws, we see four of the English pack in attendance, Laws, Vunapola, Curry, and coming into shot Underhill. Keep in mind, three were at the ruck, and Curry was in the defensive line. They've now tracked three New Zealand backs and shut down the counter-attack in the space of 30 metres. That's phenomenal work rate, and indicative of England's defensive mindset. Notice England don't worry about the ball here. First priority is getting reconnected to the rest of the team. Vunapola and Underhill set the one-two pillars, or guards, and Sinclair comes in to act as a transition defence. Again, his role here is to either support the inside defenders if needed, or if the ball is moved, track that ball and close off the seam. England not quite set, but the retreating players have created width to the line anyway. And when they come forward, they get over the game line a good five metres or so, defending in New Zealand's negative space, which is great for England. It's a good line from Leonard Brown, but we can see the folding defence does its job, brings him down as the line break is made. And England don't waste resources at the ruck, set a good two, three paces off the ruck. Now this makes sure they're on side, and also they can anticipate what Smith will do and set off early, getting across the offside line with pace when they need to. Think Faf de Klerk versus England in 2018. Smith goes left, and I think this is lazy running from Vunapola, but Owen signals play on. As it plays out, we can see England have pushed up on both sides of the line, and it's a good push on the outside, just enough to register in Reese's vision, and that drives him back into the players closing the transition zone on the inside. It's a good run from Reese, and New Zealand make it to the 10 metre line. But again, England set two, three paces behind the ruck, anticipating Smith's pass, and this time it pays off. As the ball comes to Barrett, we can see Tuolangi is already set to pressure Goodhue. The inside option off Barrett, isn't an option, and it's unlikely he's going to play over the top to bridge. Even then, Tulane can push hard on Goodhue, knowing he has inside and outside support who will fill the void he creates by shooting. Barrett is blindsided and the ball lands perfectly for Tulane. It's a great read, and his decision-making in his whole scenario is superb, but it's supported by his inside players working hard to give him that chance and that option. New Zealand now focused to scrambling, but we can also see there are near players who are not wasting energy on a lost cause and will slot in, making a wide defence. England spilled a ball, and again we have to move back into defence. Toja makes a high tackle, but the intent is simple. Stop the ball, and he just gets it wrong and gives away the penalty. But at the breakdown, we can see a couple of things happening. First is Young's role. He only has eyes for Smith. He's watching, talking, and organising whilst doing so. He'll communicate what Smith decides to do. We can see Sinclair spotting numbers and talking to Farrell, who's watching the ruck. No, England aren't too worried about having two pillars here. One is enough, and they do not mess. Once it's set, Sinclair's focus is managing that wider threat, and England have done really well here. They've got bodies in front of the ball, and now focus on defending the ball until they can get a good, solid defensive line set again. And that focus allows Underhill to get in and at the ball and slow it down enough for them to get reasonably well set on the next phase, but they haven't really loaded both sides of the ruck, which Smith, with few options, sees and attacks that space. And we can see how tired the England players are here, with Smith being able to easily step foul and is then met by Youngs. We can also see how tired New Zealand are here as Smith flicks a wild pass away. Now keep in mind, they are playing penalty advantage, so it's not too risky, and the ball becomes very loose through Barrett and Goodhue, any with Goodhue just kicking the ball away through tiredness. The sequence ends with a penalty to New Zealand. Now that's all for this time. Thanks for watching, and thanks for all your support. We'll be back with another video very soon.